This dynamic plays out in state after state. Republicans in the majority use anti-democratic hardball, even constitutionally questionable means, to maintain their grasp on the reins of power and impose their will. And it's all part of this panicked reaction to the threat posed by younger voters, voters of color, liberal voters, particularly in metro areas, who the Republican Party continues to alienate. We saw one of the most extreme examples of this in the Tennessee House last night, with the essentially unprecedented expulsion of two rightfully elected Democratic members. And one of those lawmakers is Justin J. Pearson, Democrat of Memphis, Tennessee, and he joins me now. Um, I'm going to call you Representative Pearson if it's okay with you. I, I suspect you may be soon again. Um, 24 okay. hours later, um, having had a chance to talk to both colleagues and your constituents, how are you feeling about what happened yesterday? You know, what happened yesterday was an egregious and unprecedented abuse of power by the Tennessee Republican majority. It disenfranchised all of the people of District 86 from the representative that they sent here in order to elevate the issues that they care about. We have to remember that the catalyst for this was the killing of six people slain by an assault weapon. By advocating that we do something, that we end gun violence, that we listen to the children and the parents and the adults and grandparents who have come to our capital consistently by the thousands to say that we act against gun violence, the state House Republicans decided that their best response was not to pass sensible legislation. It was not to say we need to put, put in effect red flag laws or we need to ban assault weapons. It was to expel members who exercise their First Amendment uh, rights to speak up and to listen to those who want to see more justice done. Were you at all surprised or taken aback by the visceral ferocity of the reaction from the Republican lawmakers in, in that body in which you served? No, I am not surprised at all by the way that the Republicans acted. I'm not surprised at all by our uh, uh, expulsion and the overreaction by the Tennessee Republican House Speaker Cameron uh, Sexton or the leaders of the Republican Party, uh, William Lambert or Jeremy Face. And I'm not surprised at all by their actions and their overreaction. I have seen in my time there, even serving uh, for the last couple of months, how the Republican Party operates in the state of Tennessee. Uh, the, the Cameron, the, the speaker, even called himself at one point an overseer. Uh, they are not thinking about how we can prevent gun violence. They're not thinking about how we protect the lives of those children and those adults at schools like Covenant in Nashville or my own classmate, Larry Thorne, who was killed in our community. They're not thinking about that. They're only concerned about how they can perpetuate a status quo that is dangerous and that perpetuates evil in the way that it operates and functions. And so I'm not surprised by what the Republican Party has done, what has to continue to happen as we raise our voices, we fight back against the status quo, we do everything that we can to protect the lives of our communities. Because in Tennessee, uh, Chris, we've got a lot of issues uh, as it relates to poverty, as it relates to health care, as it relates to educational inopportunity. But this overreach of power, this abuse of power against our community is a signal to other Republican states uh, at what they can do to expel voices of dissension. And that is the erosion of our democracy that's occurring. I just wanted to follow up, if it's okay with you, you just mentioned that a classmate of yours uh, when you were uh, in school uh, died from gun violence. What, what effect did that have on you? So here is an important part of this argument. Larry died actually uh, this year in January, and it wasn't in a school. This is an important fact because too many folks are just keeping the conversation to about yes. school safety. But we graduate, we, we get older. He and I graduated together from high school 10 years ago, but while I was being elected by the people in District 86 in Memphis and Millington, Tennessee, I was also going to the funeral of a classmate who was the exact same age as I am because there's a proliferation of guns that is happening in our communities because the Tennessee state legislature is passing laws like permitless carry, passing laws that say we need to reduce the age for people to carry guns from 21 to 18. We need to make it so that you don't need to uh, have a lot of training for you to carry long arm rifles and shotguns around in public. We have communities that are under siege by gun violence every single day. And no, it's not always a mass shooting. 
but one in two in three people too often in Memphis and Shelby County are being killed by gun violence. And the reality is legislation has ramifications and in action does as well. And this le Republican led legislature is only leaning into more in action as it relates to assault weapons and as it relates to guns, instead of doing what the people are asking us to do, which is to do something that can meaningfully help protect our communities and save our lives. They pass bills that they know will not have more of a positive impact for us. Um, you are you were expelled yesterday, and there's some question about what happens next. Um, I, I think that you can be reappointed by the local metro council in in Memphis. Um, and I wanted to read you this is reporting of Fox 13 local news outlet there. Um, a Shelby County commissioner told Fox 13 on Friday that Nashville leaders are threatening to take away funding from Memphis and other Shelby County projects if the county commission decides to reinstate expelled state representative Justin J. Pearson. What's your reaction to that? I, again, I'm not surprised that this Republican-led supermajority legislature is wielding their power, their authority, the ability to pass a budget against a majority black county uh, in the state of Tennessee, and also one of the counties that pays the highest amount of taxes for the state. I'm not surprised that this same legislature that refuses to do something about the ending of gun violence, the same legislature that refuses to do anything about the reduction of poverty, the expansion of Medicaid, the same legislature that won't educate kids, but will punish them with third grade retention laws is the same one that would go to elected leaders and threaten them as though they were some mob because they want to ensure that representation that was elected by the people of District 86 remains as a representative for District 86. And the question for our Shelby County commissioners that I believe the, the, the leaders here in Nashville will learn is that you cannot buy us. We cannot be purchased with the price and our democracy is not for sale. What is your plan? To keep fighting. The people in District 86, the uh, 80 and 90 year olds who came to, to the polls for us uh, to be here to advocate. Uh, the kid who cast his ballot for the first time saying, I, I, I'm voting for justice because I wanna see something different. Uh, they continue to inspire and to motivate this movement. And that's what this is. This is not a moment uh, only in American history. This is a movement to end gun violence. This is a movement to have the voices of people who for too long have been pushed to the periphery, for too long have been silenced, for too long have been told that they don't belong here, that their voices don't matter, that the issues that they care about don't deserve their day in the people's house. This is a moment in the movement that says we are going to continue to push forward and push on because justice is still possible. Even in places like the Republican supermajority tendency state legislature, justice is still possible. And so for me and for the people who are with me and beside me, my family, my community, this state, and everybody who believes that a better day is possible in Tennessee, I can promise and commit that we're going to continue to fight to get just legislation in this place and turn Tennessee into the place that it is supposed to be and not the place that it currently is.